Hola, bienvenidos a mi canal. You deserve nothing more but the most dramatic introductions. I am delighted that you have tuned in today because I'm going to have a lot of fun filming this. The pressure is on because I have a department happy hour at 4 o'clock and it is currently 3.37. So I'm gonna have to do this in one take and be as concise as possible, which actually might help my video content and quality, like the less I talk. <laughs> this video idea, God bless the subscriber who commented. Thank you, I know who you are if you are watching this. Thank you so much. This lovely individual left a comment on the, one of my videos, one of my book videos, suggesting I check out the book tarot tag. I'm a big reader, I'm a big tarot-er. So when I saw two of my most favorite interests combining, I just, I just had to do it. The creator of this idea was a Miss Luli Hernandez. Very proud of her Cuban heritage. You go, girl. I will leave her channel linked down below, but I also am going to link down below two other videos that I watched to get me real hype for this video, and that is Tammy Tries to Read and The Bookworm Treat. No, The Bookworm Trait. Yes, lovely, lovely videos. Had a lot of fun watching those videos. So basically what this tag is, is that you pick a book based off a tarot card, which has like a prompt associated with it, and you just share it. For those of you who don't know what tarot is, tarot is like a deck of cards, but it is a spiritual deck of cards. Each card means something and people use them for like divinatory purposes, for self-counseling, self-help, that kind of stuff. I find tarot very inspirational and um, often tells me what I need to hear. So there are 10 prompts, 10 associated tarot cards and we're gonna go through it. Can you tell I am excited? So the tarot deck I am going to be using to show the tarot cards is the Dragon Tarot. She wanted to come out, I guess. Dragon Tarot by Nigel Suckling. I don't have the original box that this came in, but I have a little box that I made um, just to house the cards. I didn't really like the box it came in because it was kind of like a weird box. So I found a good box that could house these cards and I scrapbooked the shit out of it and put a bunch of cute little stickers. So that is my little makeshift tarot box for my Dragon Tarot. The first prompt is going to be The Fool. And the prompt for The Fool is a book that brings you nostalgia. So for this, I picked Stephen King's books. None in particular because the man is like 80. I have here the one I'm currently reading, which is The Wind Through the Keyhole, part of the Dark Tower series. And the Dark Tower series is one of my all-time favorite epics. The reason why it's nostalgic is that I grew up reading Stephen King. I was really drawn to his books and when all the other girls in my school were reading Junie B. Jones or Beverly Clearly or whatever, even when people were reading Harry Potter, I was reading about clowns ripping off children's heads in the gutters. The second tarot card is The Magician. And for that, you have to pick a book with a male character or just a character um, that is very goal-oriented. I was going through all of my books and I saw this, The Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Haruki Murakami. I love Murakami, had to include one of his books. A one Toru Okada loses his wife and he goes in search of her and it is a mission. This man climbs down deep wells in pursuit of his missing wife and he encounters some really magical things along the way the third card is the empress and the prompt for that is a strong mother figure 
I had to pick Beloved. This is a ghost story, perfect for the season actually. A ghost story about slavery and slavery's horrific consequences. The strong mother in this book is Seth and she has gone through a journey that puts chills in your bones and still she emerges as this incredibly strong can do anything type figure. One of my all time favorite books. The fourth card is The Lovers and that is uh, a book with a romantic relationship in it that you absolutely love. Okay, so I had to pick Stephen King's Dark Tower, Wizard, and Glass. Honestly, th I struggled with this uh, question because I don't normally go for romance novels or like books that have a strong romantic relationship in them. But the romance, the love between Roland Deschain of Gilead and his sweet lady Susan Delgado. It's just one of those relationships that will always remain etched in my heart. Card number five, Justice. This is a book that makes you feel represented or heard. Mexican Gothic. I just started this. I saw everyone losing their damn minds over it on YouTube and so I decided to pick it up. I usually don't read books right when they come out. So it's been a minute since I walked into a Barnes and Nobles and picked a bestseller off the shelves. I usually read a little bit more esoterically I guess. But I was really drawn to the cover of this. It's beautiful and it just seemed like a perfect Halloween book for the season and I just wanted to read something super seasonal. I am reading this as part of my little book club with my best friend Gracia who lives in Austin, Texas. And we just are enjoying the fast-paced, like suspenseful drama that is this book. The reason why it makes me feel heard is it's because it is about a Mexican woman who is I believe clearly a Leo and she's so like fancy and bougie and at the same time though she doesn't take shit from no one and she's just off in search of ghosts. I resonate. The sixth card is death and the prompt for this is a book that has forever changed you. I was drawn to Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari, A Brief History of Humankind. And this forever changed me because it had a lot of interesting ideas that made me question our very humanity. Like for example, he makes a strong statement that we did not domesticate agriculture, agriculture domesticated us. And technically, his argument goes that because wheat and corn and other domesticated animals are much more like frequent and um, uh, present in large numbers, that that means that technically, according to like natural selection and evolution, which states that like reproduction is the number one like goal of life, that according to that, they're winning, and other crazy ideas that made me really question some things in my life. Okay, card number seven is The Devil. And this is a book in which a character frustrates the hell out of you. And I picked one that immediately came to mind, maybe because I just finished reading this. This is Paraiso Travel by Jorge Franco, who is a Colombian author. And actually, this is in Spanish. I read it with as part of my book club with Gracia, of course. She recommended this book. And there's this character in it. Her name is Reina, and she is just so... <sighs> a less empowered woman would call her a bitch, but... She is something else. She is so, so bossy and like pushes for her way. She steals like her poor boyfriend's uncle's like wedding money to like take his wife on a honeymoon in order to like get what she wants. But 
you know, it's that's the level she's at. But at the same time, at the end, I kind of almost admired her, or at least gave her this grudging respect of like, damn, this woman will do anything. Okay, the eighth card is the Tower, everyone's favorite. And this is a book that destroys a certain stereotype. And for this, I also had to pick a recent book that I read. This is Superior by Angela Saini. The Return of Race Science is its subtitle. And this literally destroys stereotypes. It's all about like the narrative in science and then basically mainstream thought, honestly, that certain races, AKA the white, the fair races, are superior to the darker races, AKA black folk, AKA indigenous folk, AKA Latino mestizo folk, and how society has co-opted scientific discoveries and scientific thought to like push and promote this idea that, you know, white people are superior. It was a really interesting book, super cool to see a lot of the history surrounding like eugenics, but also very sobering. I recommend. Okay, we're almost done here, and that's great because my hug, my honeybee, what? My happy hour starts at in seven minutes. Okay, card number nine, the star. Oof, I always love seeing the star. This is an inspirational book. And for this, I chose The Diary of Frida Kahlo, an intimate self-portrait with an introduction by Carlos Fuentes. I saw this and I was like, yes, that is the one that I want to pick for this because flipping through it, it's the diary, it's the, you know, the journal of an absolute creative artistic genius. And you see her genius just through the pages. And as an artist myself, as a journaler myself, who works a lot in journals and in art books like this, seeing someone's creative process, creative background, creative secrets, it's very, very inspirational. And it just makes me want to like continue to write and explore my artistic side beautiful and the last card is the sun Ooh, always 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 a wonderful sight the sun this is what author do you want to become a household name because of how great their work is i have all my like questions on a little scrapbook paper here because i would forget so actually, this is a bit of an interesting question. This is the one I struggled with the most because I feel like a lot of the books that I read are already like household names, you know, like Gabriel Garcia Marquez, maybe not so in the United States, but among like readers, they're like fairly well known. And then my eyes fell on this book, Michelle Alexander's The New Jim Crow. I'm gonna be honest with you, I haven't read this. This has been on my shelf for a minute and I always put it on my like high priority books to read and it always just somehow keeps on slipping, just stays in the stack. You know what I mean? We all have those books. Maybe I hesitate because it's so heavy, you know? This is about a mass incarceration in the age of colorblindness. That's the subtitle she gives this. It talks about the abuses of the justice system the terrible things that the prison industrial complex has done to our humanity. But the thing is that I need to read it to deepen my knowledge about this because that's the only way that we can even begin to hope to change it. And I think everyone should read this. It, it should be a household name. Everyone should know what is in this book and understand it. Those were my 10 books prompted by my 10 Major Arcana Tarot cards. I hope that you enjoyed watching that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm always really excited to read what you have to say. Let me know if you have read any of these books that I talked about and if so, whether you agree with my choice or not. And I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.